Okay, everybody, drum roll, please. Here's the big announcement. You guys might have been suspecting this. Some of you I've already talked to in person already know this, but I'm going back to making YouTube content and playing poker full time. My job is being outsourced slash automated. My last day was actually November 3rd, so I am fully invested back to full time. You guys are gonna see a video every single Tuesday. Right now, stop, take a second, push that like button. I really appreciate it. Help me get this video to 100 likes. My first video back got like 140 likes and got like 1400 views. And ever since then, the numbers have been going down a little bit. So that has not felt great. So help keep my confidence high. Let's get that number up here. I know everybody's gonna have a lot of questions like how much are you making from YouTube? Right now, I'm not making hardly anything. So to answer some of the commonly asked questions, no, I don't have a huge bankroll to where I can really afford to be doing this. No, I don't have a year's worth of living expenses saved up. Yes, I did just buy a house relatively recently, so that's not exactly ideal, but we are going for it, and my confidence level is pretty high. I have a long track record of the last several years showing that I am a winning player. Hopefully we can just ramp up the volume that we're playing and continue to make money. It's felt great so far, having the high level of freedom that every poker player like dreams of, or every aspiring poker player like dreams of, like that's what you want, like this is your life, this is what you get to do, you're your own boss. Let me know down in the comments any advice you have for taking on this gargantuan task. Uh, let me know if you think I'm going to make it or not. Feel free to tell me you think this is a crazy idea or anything else. Every single comment helps and I read and respond to basically every single comment. So get them in there. I appreciate them all. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you know somebody who likes poker or is just interested in poker and want to share my channel with them, that'd be fantastic. Anyway, all that out of the way, that was the big announcement. Wish me luck, guys. We're in this together. Every single one of you that follows along is a huge part of this. So I appreciate you. Let's get into some hands. We play a big session, so pretty excited to bring you this episode. Full table footage, and that's gonna be the norm from now on. How's this three? <laughs> First interesting hand of the night, we're looking down at two black aces from the button. We're feeling great, betting out $25 here over several limpers, and we're hoping to get some action. Can this session get off to a better start than this? I don't really think so. We end up getting called by under the gun, under the gun two, and the cutoff. So, lots of action here. Very happy to see some callers. Do I want this many callers? I don't really think so, but we are not gonna complain here. We've got aces. We're trying to win a big one to start off the night. Flop comes down a pretty good one for us, I think. There is a front door flush draw. When the action checks to me, I think I definitely have to charge my opponents in this spot. I bet out $50. I think I could actually go a little bit bigger than this. We end up seeing some folds before we see one caller from the under the gun plus two player. He plays a pretty loose range, I think. Uh, he could have a lot of different things on this board. The number one thing that I'm concerned about is the diamond flush draw, which comes through immediately on the turn. When he checks to me, I'm gonna check it back. River comes down, the two of spades. We both check, I flip my hand over, and we take this one down. So it sucks to not win a little bit bigger of a pot in this spot with aces, but with the front door flush draw coming through, I don't really think we can do too much about that. We are off to a flying start. We've got a $400 stack and we are looking down at king queen offsuit. There's several limpers to me. I'm on the button. I'm gonna raise it up to 20 bucks and we end up getting two callers. So not too disappointed to see this and we're not disappointed in anything in our entire freaking lives when the flop comes down a favorable one. What's the best flop for king queen? How about king, king, queen? So action checks to me. Not too shocked about it checking to me here as we have the entire board locked up. I'm going to check it back. Hoping somebody can catch up. Turn comes down at 10. Can somebody have a straight here? That'd be fantastic. Action checks to me. I'm not going to let it check through again. I bet $15 here and we are just praying for some action. We get one call and one fold. So not as much action as we would have hoped for. River comes down another 10. So that's great. Can somebody please have a 10 here? When the action checks to me, I decide we're gonna go for a big bet. We bet $85 and as you see, we get the snap fold. What a board, what a flop. We win this one. Too bad it couldn't have been bigger. Buckle up for this next one. It's kind of crazy. We've got the Brunson. We are in the big blind in this hand and there are a whole bunch of limpers to me. I decided to go ahead and check my option. We're off to see a flop which comes 10, six, deuce with two clubs. So we are flopping bottom, top and bottom pair. I end up betting $15 and we see a call in middle position and a call off a very short stack from middle position one. 
off to see a turn which comes down the five of spades. I'm gonna bet out here again. I bet $40 and we see a very tight older player that we've referred to in the past as the Colonel make it $140 after thinking for not too long. This is somebody who likes to go well into the tank before his decisions. I was pretty surprised by this bet. Um, what can he really have here? It doesn't make a ton of sense, but it's a limbed pot so he can literally have anything. We get some additional weird but slightly less concerning news when we see the player in middle position one go all in for less than $140. That's not a huge concern. I think he's either going to have one of the I think he's going to have one of the two flush draws that are now available. We are well into the tank here. I don't know if I should be folding here or calling here or raising here. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. This is a player who has made some moves against me in the past and gotten caught, but mostly he's just a huge, huge nit. Eventually, I decide to make the call. Big pot brewing here. River comes down the eight of diamonds, so completes the front door flush draw. We both end up checking and he tells us top two pair. So he's got the old 10-6, pretty unlucky for us. We get outflopped in a huge way, very disappointing. What are you gonna do? Take this one on the chin, on to the next. Okay guys, hand four is this insane bomb pot. We look down at ace, ace, king five with three hearts. I've got around $250 to start the hand. We're not the button, we're somewhere around middle position. We see these two flops come out. I think they're pretty decent for us. I really need some advice on this spot. Um, it feels like this is a get it in spot here with aces, a straight draw to the nuts on one board and a pair and a straight draw as well as a backdoor nut flush draw on both boards. I don't really know. After all the money goes in on the flop, we just have to wait and pray to the poker gods for a favorable run out. Neither turn really gives me immediate help, but at least we improve to the nut flush draw on one board. One river is an absolute brick for me, so we are down in the dumps looking for a heart on the last card to come, but we don't get a heart. We get the king of diamonds giving us trips with a top kicker. After all the normal confusion of a bomb pot is figured out, it comes down to us winning half the main pot, so we end up with somewhere around $525. Like I've said, I'm not a big fan of bomb pops at all, at all but it feels very rude and nitty to skip them. I'm stoked this one worked out. If I'm ever given an excuse to skip these, it's a great time for me to like go to the bathroom or whatever. Not really, not really a big fan. Any bomb pot advice from all you champions down there in the comment section would be greatly appreciated. So please let me know what you think and what your opinion is of bomb pots overall. Right after that crazy bomb pot, we're looking down at pocket queens. We're in middle position one, a complete unknown player, and o player opens to $20 over a limper or two. I make it $75 to go here from middle position two, waiting for him to act. And it turns out he's the only caller. So off to see a flop, which is not our favorite flop, guys. King, four, three with two diamonds. Our opponent bets out $40. I don't think we have too much of a choice here. I think we have to call at least once. So we put in the money and we're off to see a turn, which comes down on the jack of clubs. He moves all in for $125 total. I go well into the tank. I'm a dummy. I don't know why I'm even thinking about this. This feels like the most obvious ace king hand in history. I even say it out loud to him. Eventually, I make the call and guess what he's got? He turns over ace king. River is a brick. So, hate my life. Can't believe we made this call here. We lose a big one. What the hell were we thinking? Following up that pocket queen's hand, we've got another pocket pair, except for this time it's sixes. I call the $5 straddle and we are off to see a flop several hand, several ways. I bet $10 after we flop an over pair here and we end up getting a single caller, a very loose player. We expect him to be making the call here with all kinds of different draws. Turn comes down the king of diamonds. Both of us end up checking pretty quickly. The river comes down, the nine of clubs. Both of us check again. I show my hand and somehow we're good. We go ahead and take down a small pot here with the pocket sixes. Guess you can't complain too much about flopping an over pair with a tiny pair. In the next hand, we look down at the best hand ever created. We've got pocket aces. We're raising up to $15 to go in this non-straddle pot. We're under the gun plus two. We've got about 250 bucks to start. I get two callers here. So we'll take that. It would have been great to get three bet, but can't wish for everything. Flop comes down jack high. We decide to go ahead and check and the action checks through. We were hoping that somebody would improve here. Turn comes down a four. I decide we're going to go ahead and bet out here. Got to get some value. I bet $20 and both my opponents fold. So pretty disappointed about how that worked out, but we take down a small one. Not going to complain about a winner. 
Sorry about no table footage on this one. We looked down at Ace 4 suited. We made the call for $10 from the hijack. This is definitely a mistake. I think we should for sure go ahead and three bet this hand if we're gonna play it. We ended up going like six ways to the flop, so kind of a disaster. Flop comes down ace high though with one spade, so we've got backdoor nut flush draw and top pair. I decide I'm gonna go ahead and lead out here once the action checks to me. I bet $20 and we get one caller. So turn comes down the 10 of diamonds. Not a terrible card, I don't think. Action ends up checking through this many ways. I'm not trying to put a ton of money into this pot. Obviously we have a very bad kicker. We could be in terrible shape. So not trying to freak out and build a huge pot where we have to make some crazy decision on the river, which comes down the two of hearts, not a terrible river. He checks, I check back. I think maybe we should go for thin value here. Um, let me know in the comments if you would go for value in this spot. Um, yeah, not really sure, but we are sure that we love the result. We roll our hand over and we're good. So we take this one down. Not really sure if we should go for value here on the river. My lean is that yes, I should. But back to the table footage. Looking at pocket sixes, once again, this time we're in the cutoff. There's an unknown player at the end of the table who makes it $10 to go. There are several callers and I call also. Well, it's time for us to flop a set, guys. Bingo, bango, bongo. We've got his middle set on a rainbow board. He bets out $15, the initial raise that is, and I make the call. Turn comes down to nine. We don't hate that card at all. He bets $25. We decide we're gonna go into the tank a little bit. Don't really know what we wanna do here. We eventually make the call. We're laying the trap. Hopefully we can get the money in on the river. River comes down a four. He checks. I decide we're gonna go ahead and bet out $80 here. Hopefully we can get some value. And he makes the call. Really quickly, he makes the call. I felt like I gave off a tell when I flopped the set, which is pretty annoying if that was actually the case. I don't know, I just felt like I did a weird movement. but. Either way, we take down this one. It's a pretty nice sized pot. Never feels bad to see a chunk of change, some green chips getting shoved towards us. We're gonna stack these up and get on to the next one. Looking down at pocket twos in this one, we're in middle position, we got about 400 bucks. I opened a 15 before we get some really weird news. There's a $105 jam from the cutoff. We think about going for the flip, but pretty quickly decide to make the fold. Don't know what was going on there. Pretty wild shove there, I feel like. Looking down at Ace King, we messed up. We didn't get video footage of this one. Hands were coming so fast, we just didn't get it. Sorry, don't worry. The rest of it, basically, there's one other hand that doesn't have video footage. Anyway, we look down at Ace King offsuit. We got about 450 bucks and we are under the gun. Open to 20 bucks over a button straddle and we see an under the gun player who's very loose and a middle position player who is very tight. Both make the call. Great flop for us, obviously. I bet $30 and we get one caller and it's from the loose player. So we're glad it's from the loose player. Glad we don't have any shenanigans with the tight player. That's totally fine. We got top pair, top kicker. We are just looking to print value here. Turn comes down the nine of spades. Great, flush draw does not come through. I think for a second, I bet $75. He does not think for a second and makes the call. So feeling great. River comes down a terrible one. It's the nine of diamonds. I check. Very scared here that we're gonna have to face a very annoyingly large size bet before our opponent checks it back. So we get to roll our hand over. We're very confident that we're good here. And sure enough, he shows us an ace and mucks his hand. So we take this one down, nice little chunk of change. Back to the table footage. After that nice hand with ace king, we're looking down at pocket fours for middle position, starting hand off with about 600 bucks and it's a straddle pot. I open to $20 over two limpers of the straddle and I get called in two different spots. Flop comes down. Not the best one for our hand, but not a terrible one for our hand. It's ace, five, three. So we've got a gut shot and we can definitely represent an ace here. I could decide to go ahead and bet out $40, hoping we can just take this one down right now. We see one fold and two folds. So we are gonna go ahead and take this one down, ship us the chips. Not a huge pot, but still worth it. In the last interesting hand of the night, we look down at ace queen offsuit from the small blind, start the hand off with about $600. I opened it 20 bucks in a straddle pot and we get two callers once again. So they're callers that didn't think about it for very long. We're off to see a flop which comes down king high with two diamonds. I check and the action ends up checking through pretty quickly. Turn comes down the jack of diamonds. I decide to check here and we see the big blind bet $30. The cutoff folds and I go into the tank. I'm not really sure if we can turn our hand into a bluff in this spot, but I think it could maybe be okay against this particular player, especially after so much weakness has been shown in this hand. The problem is, what hands do I really have that I'm going to play like this for value? I think maybe some flushes. Would I play them this way though? I'm not really sure. I'd probably be very prone to see bet the flop here. 
Um, also with a flush, maybe I just call. So yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Let me know down in the comments what you think if I could have tried to pull off a bluff in this spot. But we've got a winning session in the books. The game's pretty much breaking. Let's rack up. Well guys, into the game for $300 and out for $550. Nothing super special, but we are certainly going to take a $250 profit without complaining about it. Thanks for watching along and supporting me on this journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what I could do better on my videos or my play. Have a good one and we'll see you on Tuesday with another video.